Courtney Reed is currently living her own Broadway fairy tale. Today we're at Copacabana to catch up with Aladdin's Princess Jasmine. We're here with Broadway royalty, everybody. Courtney <laughs> Reed, <laughs> Princess Jasmine. Hi. Thank you for doing this. Oh my gosh, of course. Aladdin came out in 1992. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the first time you saw Princess Jasmine on the screen? <gasps> Uh, I don't even know if I can recall the first time I mm -hmm. saw her, but I, I recall the probably the thousandth time that I saw her because I used to just watch the movie on repeat mm -hmm. with my sister. And um, so I think I don't think it really registered to me when I was watching it that yeah. this was going to be like one of my favorite films of all time. You know what I mean? You just kind of watched it with my sister and like, would watch all of the Disney classics. And of course, I just felt um, extra love for Jasmine because and I always saw you always talk about this, but she's the first ethnic Disney princess. So I was like, oh. Cool, like somebody kind of like me. So when, I mean, talk to me about the audition process. I mean, when you heard about the role, you were like, this is me, I want this, I can do it. Yeah, um, what was interesting, I got a call from my agent and they said, hey, they want to call you in for, um, they're doing a reading of Aladdin. I was like, what? And I had always dreamed, I remember talking to my friends when I was in Mamma Mia, and that was like years ago. Um, that was my Broadway debut. I remember talking about how people would say, like, what would be your, like, absolute dream. I was like, well, obviously like Aladdin came from <laughs> like Jasmine. And obviously Leah Sanoga did it did the movie as mm -hmm. it were. How was it taking on that sort of expectation? Because on some levels it must have been tough. You have to do a whole new world every night. Oh, How yeah, did you make so it your tough. own? That was so nervous when she came to see the show. I was like, <gasps> please boy. She's so nice. She's, she's so, so lovely. nice. She's so nice. I, I probably was most nervous when Linda Larkin, who voiced the um, voiced Jasmine, yeah. the no, the non-singing voice of it. And I was probably most nervous when both of them came to see the show. Like, you know, we had like Aretha Franklin come to see the show, Jimmy Fallon, we have so many big yeah. stars who've come. And I was definitely most nervous and most excited to meet them. It was really funny. So Jasmine on screen, some people have labeled her the first feminist Disney princess, <laughs> but I think on stage she's even feistier. And that's got, to, that's got to be you. You're putting your own stamp on the role. Oh, well, yeah. thank you. I think that she, do, yeah, I think that, um, she has um, more uh, material in the, in the musical, you know, Broadway musical production. Um, she, it's funny because she's really one of the first princesses where it's not really about her. You know, it's <laughs> yeah, not yeah. centered around her. It's not called, you know, The Little Mermaid <laughs> or Cinderella. It's Aladdin. And so you you forget when you watch the film, oh my gosh, she's not really in it that much, but she's the driving force mm. of the show. I mean, if she didn't exist, Aladdin would have no reason to do any of the things that he yeah. does in the show, really. Like you said, she's she really is kind of this like feminist in the show, and she really fights for equality so much. You do have to keep in shape. You and Adam, I mean, really do physically have to keep an incredible yeah, totally. shape. Yeah, totally. Does that drive you nuts? Do you sometimes look at a milkshake and think, I really want, <laughs> I really, do you know, I really want those fries. Yes, get out of my head. Yes, sorry. completely, 100%. No, um, I, I've gotten into cycling. Okay. I really like soul cycle. Right. So that is like kind of the reason I'm like, oh my gosh, well, I can eat today. So that's wonderful because <laughs> I just burned like 600 calories. Um, I'm so glad that I actually like it. I really like doing um, cardio, Okay. which is weird because I've always hated doing cardio until I found out about soul cycle and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. So I always, you know, and it's good to stay healthy anyway yeah. because then I don't get sick. And so when I'm eating well, I don't get sick. And of course we have those occasional like cheat days yeah, yeah, where you yeah. get to like ice cream day or like, you know what I mean? Now yeah. one of the favorite questions we've always asked um, by our viewers is on stage mishaps. They love, and you're, oh, you're on yeah. a flying carpet. Yeah. So has anything ever happened maybe on the carpet and you think, oh no, it's about to break down? It's funny because people always ask about the carpet, but there's a, the carpet is way more reliable than a lot of the other stuff that's happened. But I think one of the biggest mishaps was when we're at the rooftop scene and the two set pieces are supposed to come together and create um, Aladdin's rooftop where we mm -hmm. like first kind of meet and hang out, his house. And um, well, what happened was we run off after the marketplace and we run off and we get a swig of water, we run back on and we realize that one of the set pieces isn't moving and it happens to be the platform in which there was like the most space. So we're literally like <laughs> doing the entire scene on a little box like this. And of course the do you, big do you trust me moment happens and mm -hmm. we usually climb up the, the little yeah. top. It's not that far, but we have a little crash pad underneath. We climb up to the little top thing and then he says, do you trust me? And we jump off into the crash yeah. pad. Well, there was no like, le there was no high level. It was just kind of like this high off the ground. <laughs> and I remember thinking like, oh my gosh, we look like 
like such idiots. They must think like this is super lame. The audience is like this is super lame. Meanwhile, <laughs> the entire cast is like huddled around the monitors downstairs. Like, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? So he just kind of gets off the one foot platform, reaches up to me and he says, do you trust me? And I'm like, I'm not sure why, but yes. And he lifts me by the waist and like puts me down <laughs> and the entire, uh, the entire cast, when I found out later, was like, yeah, because they thought it was the most romantic thing. They were like, it was so, so romantic. Sweet. So cute. So you never but know like, what's going to come out of that we situation. We felt like complete idiots. I mean, we did none of the blocking. We were just like, OK, I guess we're just doing the lines. And we had to slow dance on a little box. It was really funny. Now, you grew up in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. When did you decide acting was for you? Were you little? Was there a teacher? How did it work? Yeah, oh, um, yeah, there were some really awesome teachers. I went to a performing arts high school, mm -hmm. and then I went to a theater conservatory, but I, I started taking dance when I was a kid, and I really just fell in love with performing, and I think it was probably the moment when I played Annie and Annie, which I think is the most ridiculous thing ever, like me and like, yeah. like white powdered face. I was definitely not red, this tan, but like a red wig, full out, <laughs> like, it was like full on um, just ethnic Annie, and uh, I was like, man, this is the best feeling. I think I was like singing tomorrow and like my arm went up and the audience went wild. And I was thinking like, this is the best life. I need to do this. So yeah, it started like when I was like, I just never knew a, a time where I didn't want to perform. Now, is this true? Urban legend has it that your first day in New York was the day you made your Broadway debut basically in Mamma Mia. <laughs> is this true? Yeah. Um, How my does that is happen? It's so weird. I see a lot of kids at the stage door and um, I see a lot of families and a lot of like college girls or, you know, um, they always say, this is my first Broadway show. And they're inevitably younger than I was when I saw my first Broadway show. I say like, thank your parents so mm. much for allowing you or giving you the opportunity to see a Broadway show because I never got to see one until I was going to be in it, you know? I used to see shows in Chicago, but nothing's like Broadway, yeah, you know? Yeah. So um, I had never been to New York City and I booked my first Broadway show while I was living in Chicago. I like graduated and then I booked my first Broadway show and I moved here and I, and yeah, it was crazy. And then obviously you did it in the Heights. Yeah. And you must be watching Hamilton now with like all this pride. Yeah, so much pride. When we were seeing the show, I was thinking, I was really thinking like, this is gonna be so awesome, but like, of course it can't be better than the Heights. Like, and the Heights was the best show ever, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. and then I was just completely floored and I hadn't listened to the recording at all because I didn't want it to spoil like my first experience seeing Hamilton. And I had no idea we were like in house seats and I had no idea that it, we were so lucky because yeah. now it's like basically impossible it's to get a huge ticket. Thing. And we were so lucky, I had no idea. I was like, oh, maybe I should have just like sold my tickets for $5,000. No, I'm just kidding. But um, it was just the best. Amazing. So good, so much pride. Do you have a dream role? Do you want, um, obviously very happy playing Princess Jasmine at the moment. Do you have <laughs> yeah. a dream role that you'd love to do at some point? Um, Oh, it's so hard. I feel like my career has been just like fulfilling every dream. It was like Mamma Mia was just like, okay, my Broadway debut. And then In the Heights, when I saw that, I was like, whoa, this is the best show I've ever seen. And then of course playing Jasmine, like the iconic mm -hmm. princess and growing up with the character, it's hard to feel like um, there's something that can really top it. But um, I really love Miss Saigon. Mm -hmm. I think Miss Saigon is like probably one is definitely my top five favorite shows or like my but favorite show coming. besides in the heights i know right so it'll be really fun to see but um yeah i'll probably i don't know maybe i'll play i'll get to play kim like regionally somewhere i don't know um yeah broadway broadway yeah. So good. i'd always like to bring it back to the show for the final question what do you hope audiences take away with them from aladdin a lot of things i hope they take a lot of things when they go home or when when the curtain comes down I hope that they feel like they've been transported to, to Agrabah, or they've been transported to their, um, their childhood. I hope that they're transported to um, a magic carpet, feeling like they're flying on a magic carpet, um, feeling like they definitely spent the last two and a half hours in pure joy and laughter. I think Aladdin brings you back to the things that matter the most. And it's, you know, telling the truth, um, family, love, friendship, bromances, um, and just good old Alan Menken music and bringing you back to your childhood. I just hope that they leave with all of those things and more. Wonderful. Courtney, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.